Uh, thanks, Annabelle, Fabian, Eugene, Markus, Markus, we are putting together this nice workshop. I said already it's like a like being back in when was the last workshop of this 2018, right? 2018. Uh, so there's a very similar spirit, and we can measure the progress. <laughs> this, this is nice. Um, so um, I'm I'm giving a talk, which is basically largely a proposal talk because I don't have a, well I left my experiment. Yeah, so <laughs> I will talk about that. So. Um, I will, but in, because I feel like an, as an experimentalist, a little bit bad uh, having only you know fantasy on the slides. I had to put a little bit of results from Munich at the beginning. Um, so, uh, but but the main thing will be about our ideas, how we can tackle actually this this really hard uh, border that we seem to have around 0.2 TOC in the in the Fermi Hubbard model. And uh, we thought a bit about this, and I will tell you about our. Approach to this. Uh, no, we started not for some reason. Let's start on the book before I was clearing this power system. What? 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 Okay. Okay, now it works. Yeah. Ah, because it cannot find me. <laughs> okay, good. So, like, so, so, outline of my talk is, is basically, you know, this this phase diagram of the cuprates, which has well little to do, as we also learned in this conference, with Udi, uh, Fermi Hubbard models, at least without uh, uh, T prime. Um, it, let's just take it as a as a motivation and uh, and and to place our experiments in that in that phase diagram. So this talk is largely about actually what I said, uh, trying to reach actually this region here uh, below T over TF about 0.05 actually, which I will I will show you, which corresponds actually pretty nicely to in the lattice T over T around 0.25 for the parameters where we usually are, um, and how we can access this region. And then what I said, because of I want to tell you a little bit about the experiment, I planned actually to talk about these. Uh, our experiments in Munich, where we uh, where we scan basically here at these uh, elevated temperatures, uh, the, the doping region, and measured locally um, correlation uh, around the hole from the uh, from the uh, thin polaron uh, that uh, Timon already talked about, uh, also Yao talked about, and now Martin has another incarnation uh, of that uh, of that polaron on the um, attractive side. Um, and talking about basically, I wanted to talk a little bit of this about this doping dependence, but this I will also now cut short because you know, uh, it already. So, so you know. <laughs> The, uh, the shiny images uh, of Kornugas microscopes, I wanted to put it in black and white and show you actually on one slide how we actually do graph bilayer imaging really. Um, we have actually our team on this in Munich, this, uh, this very nice trick actually of, of imaging two planes separated along the imaging axis on actually a single image, it's not moving, on a single image. What do we do? We just split the optical path and put a different lens on part one than on part two, such basically that this path looks a little bit back on the first part. And then we can also turn this mirror a little bit to displace basically one image to some other edge of the camera than the other, uh, than, 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 the, uh, than the image from the other part. And with this, we get basically get on one image the information of two planes. And uh, that's uh, a little bit of insight. And based on these images, um, we then basically studied uh, magnetism um from the from the undercurrent magnet to the Fermi liquid so this uh, this this line that I showed you uh, we scan through and what we measured is actually in the, in the, what I want to point out what we measured here is basically then microscopically um we measured uh, the spin population or the spin occupation on, on on each side and then we calculate from that directly numerically uh, the static structure factor just what Andrea was talking about they measure that basically directly with their trick. We can, uh, with all the microscopic access, of course, calculate that. So this is the data here. 
by uh, going up uh, the, the doping axis from some of these studies at 8% to like really half the system empty at your over T uh, equals 8. And uh, this is right now, now <laughs> really confused me <laughs> the right direction, T over T 0.4. Um, and what we see that uh, around the doping of roughly 25, 30%, we see that something happens with the peak at high, high. Um, it seems to split, and then we get clearly un, uh, in, incommensurate um, uh, correlations at the doping level uh, of 50%. And then in collaboration with Eugene, Annabel, Fabian, Yao, um, we can match that to, uh, to theory, and uh, well, we have a nice agreement there. But again, um, the, the matching to theory part Yao already <laughs> presented. Um, we can also um, study uh, this, of course, microscopically. Here we were interested actually in the uh, in the transition from the um, uh, spin magnetic uh, spin polar on. What happens actually if we go away from the small doping regime to the large doping regime? So basically, same doping levels up here, and we see that the uh, that the correlation change from this char characteristic uh, polar on imprint to correlations that share the qualitative features that also uh, uh, Fermi liquid state uh, features. So, so it's the, and, and actually what, what we use as kind of an indicator, and this is purely purpose or largely phenomenologically, I would say, is when actually do these uh, correlations on these legs actually change sign, and that also happens around its 20-ish percent doping. So this is somehow the level where the system uh, shows, uh, shows changes. And I think the true the true question I want to raise, and I discussed this already with Nandini and also was in the discussion after Yao's talk, I, I, it might be that we have already data that is really, we should compare to uh, the, the, the predictions uh, that you pointed out in momentum space. And that's that really, I think, on the, should be on the task list after this workshop somehow. Yeah? Um, good. More I don't want to say. So great. So done. Good. So now, um, the rest is really about plans, uh, and I want to start that basically with uh, sharing with you um, ex an exciting summer uh, 2001. I'm very excited down there for taking the table that rolls out of MTQ's uh, 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 um, laboratory and then uh, goes on the track and goes to Tübingen. And then we have this one million box, uh, one million euro box here that flies into a window uh, there. Um, that all worked nicely. We were very lucky. On the same day, two hours later, it looked like this. <laughs> there was a very heavy hailstorm, and <laughs> they were coming with snow It was really the same day. And, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, one year later, um, that was actually the potassium beta experiment. I'll show you in a minute what we are actually up to in, in my group now in Tübingen. One year later, um, we have this experiment up and running nicely again. Uh, we have nice labs and uh, doing regularly uh, tweezer physics uh, uh, with potassium now again. Um, so again, because the group is rather new there, and I got many questions. What what are you actually doing? I want to I want to tell you this. So what I have to be doing in tubing? We have one experiment that was the one that I you saw flying there. Uh, it's about potassium uh, in uh, tweezer arrays where we study. Uh, New ways of controlling inter, uh, interactions between rootback atoms uh, for, for non equilibrium uh, uh, physics mostly. We want to study kinetically constrained uh, and open system dynamics in these, in these systems. Then we have the platform that is that is new, and I want to talk more about it this erbium lithium mixture uh, in optical lattices. And the idea, yeah, as I said, strongly correlated matter at lowest temperatures. And there are many other things you can do with this one is sterilization, localization uh, in, in very strongly mass imbalanced mixtures. Um, and the third experiment that is about cryogenic uh, rootback arrays of strontium. Cryogenic means we pack it in four Kelvin, we get rid of a lot of uh, trouble that we get from black body radiation uh, that, uh, between the rootback, uh, that couple the, the rootback states basically. Um, and uh, we will focus then on, on a little bit on quantum computing in these arrays and precision dynamics and, and local control. It basically comes with that. So, Floquet stuff that we heard already about uh, from the Google team, uh, that, where these systems are really uh, perfectly suited to. So, again, this, this is the topic. Um, and I uh, want to talk uh, about the ideas behind this experiment. So, ultra cold atoms. Temperature. So where do we stand? 
And let me start basically with bike systems because of that, that kind of the natural starting point where we always start because of the cooler system from bike. So we always start at 1.5 and then we load into a lab. Yeah? So it's important to understand what's the temperature in bike. So uh, experiments in 2003, we have two of the protagonists here sitting behind them. So this experiment that was done in Wolfgang's group, Martin is here, Lauren was, uh, was first author. They already in 2003, they reached 5% of the Fermi temperature. This is basically the standing record that we have today. There was one experiment actually where they where they report three percent of the Fermi temperature in Christophe Salomon's group. It's 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 very and it's not very similar, yeah. Um, but it's basically a record which is yeah 20, 20 years old and and was not broken since then. And the question is why? Bosons. Just for completeness, let's compare it. Uh, there has been experiments uh, uh, in uh, Dan Stamper Kern's group. Um, where they where they reach here over the 0.02, actually pretty similar, a little bit colder than the bike. Yeah. Now the question is, this t over 60, uh, uh, 60 over small t of uh, 0.25, which is like the record uh, that that Marcos reached here. Um, how does that compare actually to this five percent t over t f before? And you can actually make a rough estimate just saying, okay, I have T over T 0.25 and U over T uh, equals 8. Then we add, add a chemical potential equals the Fermi temperature of U over 2. You put everything together and you find 0.0. And it means actually, we have, it seems not that we are really limited by the process of loading into the lattice with the thermal. These, these temperatures are very basically metric. And so it's not that we heat horribly when turning up the lattice. It seems really that we are we are at the point where we that, that we are limited by the temperature we reach after the evaporation. Um, bosons, uh, if you do the same for bosons, uh, so um, these uh, boson experiments that have been done in Heidelberg, um, done by Hans, uh, part of proof in Heidelberg still. Um, with a similar technique, actually, I didn't say it, but uh, to reach these low temperatures uh, and push a little bit of entropy out. Um, similar technique, uh, T over U equals 0.05 is actually also what other bosonic uh, lattice systems reach at mu equals U over 2, and you reach T over mu equals 0.1. It's actually even a bit of hot in the lattice. Um, and now the question is, where is the target? So we talked here already a lot uh, about the target. So we are at this 0.06 uh, T over Tf. If I just take this diagram, and actually this is the true reason why I have this diagram on the slide here, because I have some temperatures of some solid state stuff that I have no clue about, but this diagram cites me. So if I want to go down here, I, I need something like a factor of five. Uh, and actually, Antoine now told us uh, try is actually two to three, right? So just uh, maybe. So um, the uh, the interesting region might might be uh, might be even only a factor of two of it. So um, that's the target. It's not infinitely far away. Yeah. Um, and actually, I, I'm optimistic and very likely even existing machines uh, would, can reach the target. Uh, I want to just show you actually the natural next steps that I think will be done by uh, Munich or in, in Harvard or wherever or at MIT uh, is, is probably to make use of uh, in a clever adiabatic transition by starting from an entropy engineered uh, gas initial state, like this double band insulator that, uh, that Marcus prepared here, where they get a uh, very low entropy of 0.016 -ish, uh, per site in the center, and combine that with new technology that everyone is now building in these experiments, uh, super lattices basically, that you can do a splitting of the, uh, of the unit cell in the center in a very controlled way and transfer. Uh, transform this bunt insulator into an antiferromagnet um, by this local transformation that this works efficiently has been shown already theoretically and uh, by that we can I think we can really hope that we transfer the flow entropy over to the to the AFM. The question is of course this picture here is without doping right so how that works with doping is totally unclear to that. So this is one route um, that that will be explored in this system. Uh, I'm pretty convinced uh, uh, that will come before actually what uh, we will do, what we talk about. Uh, but the thing is, I said already, okay, there, there is a limit, right? So this little toy thing works at, at, at hard filling, but it's unclear what, what is uh, going on when there's doping. And there might also be other interesting physics that you cannot uh, adiabatically connect to. So that means it would be nice to have actually a, a general solution to this temperature problem. 
at least to push the temperature by a factor of five to ten. Yeah. Um, to 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 understand to to do this now and to to come up with some crazy idea of how we could reach this, uh, we have to go, uh, talk about cooling limits. What are the cooling limits? So one thing that limits the thermal temperature is this effect of whole heating. So in these systems, we have a finite vacuum, and once uh, in a while, there comes a background particle, a hydrogen atom that knocks out an atom out of the thermal heat. And it doesn't care at which energy it knocks it out of the thermal energy because of the energy is on order of magnitude away. Right? So it's equal probability to kill anyone. Um, and this is the effect of whole heating that uh, Eddie Zimmerman was uh, describing uh, already in 2001. And what happens is you kill that fermion, the system re-thermalizes, and well, you get all the temperature, right? Um, and there is actually a prediction what is actually the time scale to double the temperature um, due to this effect. Um, and that is, of course, well, it's dependent on the temperature where you are at. And let's compare a few time scales. If we have typical lifetimes of 100 seconds due to this uh, single atom collisions with the background gases, and if we start at 1% of the Fermi temperature, we would have 200 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. So this looks like, I mean, I cannot say we are very far away, but it doesn't look like that we are fully at that limit yet. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, uh, <laughs> one is not completely sure about this also. Um, if we would be a factor of 10 colder than that, we would have to do something against the cold. We have to get the, we have to get the, the vacuum last times up for sure. Yeah, but it, it doesn't look like that, that we are at the limit of here. Um, this whole heating, is actually one of the things one has to be also very, very careful if one does evaporated cooling by by, by Fermi Fermi evaporation, because you're throwing away the fermions if you do that too fast, you're cutting holes right too deep into the uh, away from the from the Fermi system. Um, there's another limit um, that limits Fermi Fermi evaporation efficiency, and this, at least I believe, um, is what we are seeing. And this is that we have these two fermions that we need, right, to, 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 to have, uh, have collisions going on. Um, but if both Fermi gases become deeply degenerate, then actually we, we have the problem that we want to scatter from this uh, part of the distribution into this part of the distribution. But these areas, they're exponentially fast close when we go forward and temperature. And that means we have very inefficient collisions uh, that, that actually um, uh, provide cooling to us. And this has been, uh, has been looked at uh, in these papers, and they predict actually um, an exponential shoot up here, it looks like exponential, at least a strong shoot up um, of the relaxation time um, around T over Tf of 0.1. And so this, this seems like, that uh, looks like the, the limit where we, where we roughly are. And I think not uh, all the experiments that are now at these record temperatures actually at the last evaporation step, you kind of semi Fermi thin mixture evaporation, right? Martin also will do the last step that's when you turn the mixture. Yeah, um, evaporation, yeah. So this this is a candidate actually that, that is limiting. Um, and that means go back from go go away from Fermi Fermi, um, go to sympathetic cooling with bosons. Yeah, and that makes it a bit better because at least you have only one Fermi C that you are sort of close and scattering, but uh, well, at least you always have <laughs> no way around that. Um, so, uh, both the Fermi sympathetic cooling has, of course, a very long history. And I have pictures here from Ren, uh, from one of the first Fermi gases that have been produced, um, and that was done with lithium six, uh, lithium seven. Um, and so, the question is, why would did these experiments not yet produce colder temperatures? Well, one thing is, of course, it's uh, uh, it, it, it's it starts to get hard to measure. The other thing is, well, well, my point is actually none of these experiments has two differential charge control. This is what I want to, well, but I hope that we can get much better with, uh, because of when you get cold, you always run into problems in these dual species evaporations um, because of you might lose overlap. The condensate becomes very small. The uh, fermions are still large. This is actually what you see on these pictures. Um, you have to be careful if you don't have trap control. You will also kill your fermions at one point. Whole heating comes back, and um, you might lose overlap due to gravitational effect if your thermal distributions become small and so on and so forth. There are mysterious effects which kill your overlap. There are many reasons why evaporations become 
uh, evaporation becomes uh, also here inefficient if you don't have enough control knots. And this is the thing. I mean, here nothing is fundamental if I really can control the, two, the shape um, and the position of the two clouds independently. That should actually work to lower temperature. Um, so um, that's the point of differential tap control, which basically can solve all these overlap problems. Um, and uh, then there is still a problem with all the fermion, uh, all the Fermi evaporation. And that is the problem that when you want to use your bosons as a coolant, you get actually a problem due to thermodynamics in the degenerate regime. The thing is, the heat capacity of the bosons goes down below T. C much faster than the heat capacity of the thermal. So that means you have a very inefficient coolant because of you cannot send here as no channels to store the energy. Right? So, so that is something that switches up uh, uh, then efficient uh, 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 cooling of fermions due to the bosons. But there's a way, of course, to solve that if you have differential trap control again. Because of you can control where actually the degeneracy temperature of the bosons relative to the fermions is if you can control the trap frequency of the fermions versus the trap frequency of the bosons. And this you can do with the masses of the two species and you can do that, of course, with the weights of the laser, right? But you have to make sure that they don't be the traps, respectively. And here comes erbium lithium. Um, erbium lithium is in one respect unique, I would say. And that is erbium lithium has its main cooling and manipulation wavelength as in the blue, so and in the yellow, 401 to 83. But there's also a, wave, a, 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 a narrow line at uh, 841 nanometers. And this 841 nanometers we can use by going slightly red detuned to the 841 nanometers, which will kill, kill basically the, uh, or balance basically uh, the repulsive effects we get from the blue detuning to from the uh, well, it's the other side, right? We are ready tuned to the to the blue uh, and yellow wavelengths and blue to the uh, eight forty one line, and we can balance the the uh, um, the polarizabilities that we get from the from these lines and realize the tune out at eight forty one nanometer. And the key is that is far ready tuned to lithium, and this is the special feature here: far enough red that we don't really scatter in this red uh, in the required uh, times. Um, and that now means. We can really get this full differential trap control, holding the lithium in this metric trap at 841 and move it in the coolant of the bosons, which have very small level spacing because of we can make that trap very large, which, by the way, has the uh, advantage that this low curvature that this trap uh, does, uh, uh, has does nothing to the, to the tightly trapped fermions here. Um, and with that, we can actually, what I show you here is erbium lithium with this ratio of traps, which is realistic. One can actually get the ratio of the fermions over the uh, fermion critical temperature to the boson critical temperature of 100. Uh, that means basically you have a classical gas that is very cold that can cool your fermions and say that when you say so that's an entropy, entropy reservoir. The other nice thing is if I can do a harmonic trap, at this magic wavelength, I can do any trap at this magic wavelength. So I can also do cooling in the lab. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty general uh, uh, system here. Now come the now come the drawback. This because of this uh, very different masses. Something. Very yes. So you said you have the breakdown of hundred or whatever, and I guess that accounts for the fact that. Uh, I don't even care for that. I just, I just, I mean, the fermion field, you, you can make the bosons with this trap ratio. The boson cloud is always large enough, basically, to, to fit the, to the fermions in. Okay. And the concept of a gravitational sex, that is something that comes from having the two atoms in the same trap. And, and then one goes lower, the other one goes higher because of different polarizability, different masses, and so on and so forth. Here, you just took, you just move one trap a little bit up again. This is what I meant. I mean, you keep the overlap with the piece. My point is, like, at some point, if you make the trap with the reader, you won't have a deep enough trap to actually um, keep the atoms filling out the trap. Well, but if you did this, 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 you can do it one axis tight or something like this. I mean, or you can cancel it with your, you, or you can cancel it with magnetic fields. Everyone is very magnetic. It's not, it's also not fundamental in this in this trap. For example. Yes, and I've always felt that the argument with the heat capacity is misleading. Why? Right? Because 
you would say if you want to do something sympathetically, that it's better to put it with bosons above the transition temperature than below. But I mean, if I think any cloud in contact with an ice cold Bose Einstein condensate, it absorbs the heat, it cools the other atoms at least as well, not even better, if I just use slightly above the transition temperature. Yes, so but maybe the, the, the heat capacity is sort of an equilibrium argument, which I'm not sure if it really applies to the moment. No, but, but the, the thing is, if you don't, and you, you have to come and put heat out of the system, I told you right, you, you, you heat it up, it cools quickly, but it cannot cool much because it goes very fast, it's hot, but the other system cools only a little bit by that. Let me run so quick. <laughs> There's 840, just below 841. Yeah, so that's for everything. For everything, it's 1064, but very, very, very large. But a little bit see it, but the curvature is very low. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but the thing is, unequal masses, we have to pay actually a, a price, and that is a collisions. Take uh, a thermalization takes more collisions. Actually, it takes 22 collisions instead of three collisions in this model. So this is a fool. Uh, it takes longer to thermalize. Yeah? But the thing is, if we sit on the standpoint of erbium and we know erbium thermalizes, lithium is much faster. The collision rate is much higher. If we take this into account, um, then actually we pay a penalty of only 2.7 relative to erbium. That's not that bad. Yeah? So this, this looks okay. And we have. And we have lots of flashback resonances in erbium, in erbium lithium, now measured uh, in Japan here very recently, um, that we can actually control the scattering. There's one other thing that is quite worrisome at the first sight, uh, and that I'm not totally sure how to be, how well we can uh, suppress this. This is dipolar relaxation. Um, erbium is a very strong magnet. Lithium. Is a very weak magnet. This is the nice thing. If erbium would not be a very weak magnet, you would never get uh, the spin mixture of lithium stable in an erbium cloud because of you would have dipolar relaxation collisions between erbium and lithium, basically just turning the spin upon the full spin state and bringing the energy. But at intermediately high speeds, you in lithium, you basically decouple the electronic spin from the nuclear spin. And then the relative magnetic moment between these spin states here is very small. And then actually the, the product, if you take the product of the magnetic moment of erbium with the magnetic moment of lithium, which you have to take into account to calculate this uh, uh, um, uh, relaxation rate, that actually becomes pretty small. Can I ask you, this is for infinite fields. Yeah, uh, it's Hiller factor of two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? Uh, of of, is it? of uh, yeah, yeah. One has to calculate it, so one has to put it. Because there's still some in yeah. yeah. other than yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and this is actually the limit. Yeah, I think so. so this this is the limit of of uh, actually this is why <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, so so anyway so I I'm I'm not even I'm not even I have no clue if this works right it's just it was uh, the best idea we came up with to attack this uh, if someone has a better idea I'm happy to hear that yeah what if you want to start with a spin mixture of lithium so we don't need to start with the return wave on the but then you have to open the spin channel yes. Then you have to open so you, you have so everything polarized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you do that, then every every little every the initial side is basically a, a, it's a separable state between everything in the plane. Huh? So and then it's back to point five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's back it's immediately back to point five. I think if it doesn't work, well, the original one already says polarized with uh for every optical compass with you. You don't want to. We can spin polarize it, of course. It's yeah, just if you want to do interesting stuff, you have to You don't have to worry about the spin exchange. No, but the question is how do you prepare then your initial state for interesting stuff? You have a if necessary in the spin mixture, right? Then then you cannot cool to the to the final state. So I agree that you can do tons of interesting physics cool without the spin mixture, but you cool then you, you pump it into the state of interest. But that is a highly, highly intended state, right? So, and if I just open the spin channel in lithium by just an RF pi over two, I mean, it's co completely uncorrelated with the spin, right? So, it's a paramagnet pointing into, pointing into it. And now this has to develop, and where should it, where should it come to entropy? I mean, it has to do some shifting, whatever, but it's a closed system from then on, right? So, I'm doing basically a branch in the mechanics, in the mechanics, right? Yeah. So, can you do, oh, if you don't have to do that, Two systems 
of each phase of the system. You pull them down, then you wait. Yeah, but <laughs> it's always the same problem. You just said that. Yeah, it is. I mean, sometimes you, have, you, you start with something separable and you want to go into a fancy and negative scale, and it, 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 you want to cool into that. Yeah, so, but I, I think there are many interesting questions actually. Oh, who oh. can and then you start the interactions off and slowly turn them on, right? Something like this. Yeah, yeah. It might be, might be another body cut. Okay, let me let me just run through or or we do the questions. I'm ready for it. So, I don't care. So um, I, I just want to show you where we stand. So we have we have this elaborate machine. There, there is there is one issue with lithium, and maybe there are more issues. But one issue is the for already for the magneto optical trap, they like very different magnetic fields and so on and so forth. So we decided actually to do a two chamber design, uh, and the design cell here we will transport everything over there. Uh, one thing is challenging: we need to transport over one meter, but somehow we will solve that. Um, as I said, vacuum. You have to be careful for vacuum. So we we took actually a design. Uh, or decided for a design that 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 has basically a very isolated science chamber, basically only glass, a little bit of stainless steel, and a strong pump here, and we hope to get really good pressures in this glass cell. Um, and uh, this is how it looks in the lab. Um, quite messy now. Uh, a lot of cooling water, a lot of laser systems, uh, uh, and uh, well, status is I hope for the mod of lithium at least this week. Uh, it always works when you are away, right? Um, so. <laughs> Uh, and uh, this is my team in, in, in tubing, basically, and the people I highlight in yellow that is, uh, are the heroes of this erbium lithium machine and, and, and now things, and that's all. Uh, More questions. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to, to point out uh, uh, one thing that when you have a strong interacting lithium six gas, say, near the utility, it could beautifully. And um, you, you don't actually run out of steam because even at zero temperature, the interactions broaden the Fermi surface so much that you never run into issues of like Pauli or something. Yeah. Uh, so so I think it's actually an ideal uh, situation to start. Right. So where, where is the lithium from? Well, well, I'm not working with lithium six. And <laughs> my, Marcus, <laughs> Marcus is in good shape then. And, and and I think it's it's um, it's just to be kept in mind like this yeah. this argument that would not apply to a strongly interacting yeah. lithium six uh, gas in the yeah. So I can say I mean the thing is I really thought hard about it and then I analyzed kind of I mean from the discussions we had I mean we had very different cooling ramps ending ending at the same temperature effectively now you are also at this 0.3. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah, that's the, no one knows what's going on. And it matches roughly with the temperatures in the harmonic test, right? Mm -hmm. But this is not, I mean, of course, this is not exact, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's not an order of magnitude off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a uh, question which uh, is related to your mechanism for heating when a cold, when a lens yeah, 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 comes yeah, out yeah, and yeah, the yeah, the yeah, the yeah. So, um, Long time ago, following the work we did with Silva on thermoelectric effects, we had a strange proposal from the Apollon and the Steel Academy to actually uh, uh, use the sort of an equivalent of phase cooling to fill the hole. You know, so is this something you could, you could envision and to do another layer and to engineer the, the, the connection between the layer and that other layer? Something that human has, you, you can do all evaporations. Yeah, 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 actually, I can listen to this. No, I don't know the details. I don't know the details. No, but there are many. I mean, I was trying to point that out. This is for sure not the only thing and the only route to go. There, there, there are these, 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 these adiabatic trans transfer parts that, that work to some build. I am convinced they will work to some extent. Yeah. 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 Uh, do they, is it yeah, it's, so it's, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit to the brand. It's the same one, that's one. I'm sure that everyone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the brand is.
Das heißt, er hat nur einen Lust, er hat nur Cola, er hat nur Cola. Und das wird er, er hat nur einen Faktor vor der Welt. Das ist der Vergleich, aber ich habe das nicht. Das ist der exakte Comparison in all of this. Und das Devil ist in der, in der, in der, in all different Experiments und all different Limits. I mean, it's already hard to come to the conclusion that this is really, I mean, that we are really at the fundamental limit. I mean, I even don't know that really, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Can you take Yes, yes. So, so the other one would be uh, the protein density, but this is at 8740, so it's considerably closer uh, to, uh, to the lithium back then. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, there's uh, strontium, uh, there would, uh, I think there's no line, I think there's no line, uh, and there's no pepper. Right now. Yeah. 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 Cesium, yeah, cesium is a uh, one and what cesium could, could is the other candidate with a bit easier answer, so to say. But the detuning of that tune out from cesium is not, it's not, it's not great. You are 20 nanometers away, so you would still scatter. And I would be afraid that that, that, that limit when you really want to go to that. And <laughs> you really, you should better not scatter. <laughs> I was wondering about the Tischbach resonances. Uh, does your scheme require being close to one? And no. Uh, what about, okay, so no, good. No, it's no. probably good. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. <laughs> and the, the connected question would have been three body uh, physics, like maybe some enhanced losses that we might not know about. If you more, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I think I forgot that I do a fantasy talk, right? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't talk. No, no one has, no one has. If you look at the, can you show no, us? Scan again. Uh, yes, beautiful. Um, actually, one, one thing is actually already with this uh, is uh, heavy with her, it, it's so heavy, you uh, levitated over the whole, whole transport. Uh, the flashback scan actually, there's a, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. a little bit. Uh, the interesting thing is that that. I decoupled the, the rest of the world. <laughs> that, <laughs> that ends that ends at uh, 70 cars. Uh, so so and that that starts at uh, so so kind of this year is the little overlapping region that is that is scanned so far uh -huh. and so it's 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 not too much actually this this is a quite nice this is useful one uh, a quite nice line yeah. um, to me it's not really clear this is lithium uh, one half uh, and minus one half at rather large fields and they look quite different yeah so this is very pretty much brand new data. Tell me what the communication to replicate cooling. All your references about the communication to cooling were from your previous goal, you know, two to five, two to replicate cooling, replicate cooling. And people gave arguments, but I never found them fully convincing. I already made a comment about whether the P to the Q peak capacity really matters because uh, this is an equilibrium. Replication is not equilibrium moving. Similarly, when people say how they go, uh, you know, that the Fermi C sedimentation is correct, that the phase space for collisions is heavily reduced, you know, and we yeah. mentioned that, yeah. but at the same time, the amount of heat you have to get out of it is also reduced because most of the atoms are already heat in the Fermi C. It has never been clear to me whether those two effects just cancel. You don't need so much heat removal anymore when you are at the fuel, but the effect is small, but you also have fewer collisions which can do that, and maybe that cancels and you're not really getting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know that better than you for sure. No. So so this I never fully what, understood what's yeah. arguments. So yeah, I, but what is was let, let me reverse it. What is your take? What is the limit? I mean, there's a reason, right? Why, why, are we, uh, why are we at five percent and stuck at five percent? I let's talk about how many collapses count of Because you really have now a loss in the Fermi C is EV. And if you want to be at 1% of the Fermi temperature, each lost atoms you know, can, have, can have a hundred fold increase in the dust. Well, of course, it's the temperature. Right? I mean, at one, at the, at the, if you would be at 1%, you still have 200 milliseconds to go to 2%. So from the timing, 